Take a look at this map. It shows the change in coronavirus cases over the past two months. You can see cases are rising, and as the weather gets colder and people head back indoors, experts say it could get worse. As we get through the fall and into the winter, with the holiday season going, we've got to do something different. Experts warn that many buildings, like restaurants, schools, and homes, are not equipped with the ventilation and filtration systems needed to reduce the spread of COVID-19. So by now, people are really familiar with masking, hand washing, distancing, but fewer people are aware that ventilation and filtration really matter. It's now clear that the coronavirus travels through the air, which is why indoor gatherings can be so deadly. The virus can accumulate in aerosols, tiny droplets that gather in the air as we breathe and talk. That virus is never naked in the air is what we say. It's always floating in respiratory droplets that are much bigger. Indoors, those particles can add up, increasing the risk of transmission. And one way to mitigate that is to pump in fresh air with a ventilation system. We have to think about the thermal conditions like humidity and temperature, but also just how much outdoor air is moving in. For me, the priority is to increase the air exchange rate. The air exchange rate determines how many times an hour fresh air circulates through a building. There's not an exact recommended rate, but experts say that three to six exchanges per hour is ideal. But good flow of fresh air is only one part of preventing the indoor spread of the coronavirus. The other is filters, and experts recommend using one called HEPA. This type of pleated mechanical filter is made from fiberglass, foam, or cotton. It can remove more than 99% of airborne particles, including those carrying viruses like the coronavirus. This is the same type of filter used in hospitals and airplanes. But there has been some confusion over whether or not HEPA filters can effectively capture airborne coronavirus. That's because these filters are rated for particles that are 0.3 microns in size, larger than the coronavirus. People assume that they don't catch anything smaller, but that's just not true. Filters are rated for the particle size they perform worst at, and that's 0.3 microns. As you get to bigger particles and even smaller particles, the HEPA filter will capture closer to 100%. Because the coronavirus tends to travel in droplets that are larger than 0.3 microns, HEPA filters can capture almost all of them. The virus also travels in droplets that are smaller, and HEPA filters can capture those too. Filters work not by straining out things that are larger than the holes in them, but they actually work by trapping particles in the air as the air flows around the different fibers in the filter. When very small aerosols bump into gas particles, they move at a random pattern. That is called Brownian motion. Kind of like a drunk person stumbling around in the dark. And because of that random motion, they can crash into the fibers. The harder it is for particles carrying viruses to pass through a filter, the lower the chance of viral transmission. But the problem is that not every building has a system that can handle them. When you have a air system moving air through the building and then it runs through a filter, you can imagine that a higher efficiency filter that's more tightly woven, is going to be harder to push air through. Very few systems can push air through a HEPA filter unless it's designed that way because HEPA is the most efficient filter we have. That is why experts recommend that schools, businesses, and homes use a different type of lower efficiency filter called MERV. If you can get up to something called MERV 13, that's able to remove 80% or more of viruses that might be in the air. This is important because this type of filter can be installed in standard ventilation systems, like what you might have in your home. Still, there are plenty of buildings that aren't able to adapt this type of filter either. Many people are starting to realize for the first time that their buildings can't respond. Their systems are not dynamic. They're not resilient. They can't increase capacity. Older and underfunded schools face some of the biggest challenges. According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, 41% of districts need to update or replace their ventilation system in at least half of their schools, which adds up to about 36,000 schools nationwide. The Washington, D.C. public school system spent $24 million on upgrades to handle higher efficiency filters in preparation for the return of students and teachers. And it's not just pricey for schools. Some restaurants will need to spend over $30,000 to upgrade their systems, in addition to operating costs. You pay more for energy to bring in more outdoor air and condition it, and also uh, work harder, your system will work harder to push air through a higher efficiency filter. The air pumped into buildings also needs to be cooled or heated, which adds to energy bills. 
even though not every building can afford to make these adjustments, experts say there are other solutions. For older buildings with outdated systems, opening windows is a good, cheap option. But in the winter, this isn't always possible, and some buildings have windows that are sealed shut. If you can't hit the targets, consider supplemental air cleaning through the use of a portable air cleaner with a HEPA filter. Now, if you size these correctly for the room, for a restaurant, a school classroom, a bedroom at home, you can get four, five, or six air changes per hour of clean air, and it can be cost effective. That's what the DC public school system did, in addition to upgrading their ventilation systems. The bottom line, we know that the coronavirus can spread through the air, and we know how to reduce the risk of transmission. The biggest hurdle will be the cost of putting the science into action.